Hey YouTube, it's John uh, from Evans Aquariums. It's been a long time since I've posted. Really not a lot has gone on. I guess that was good <laughs> or else I would have been showing off stuff, but a couple of things happened. Um, my royal grandma, out of quarantine, doing really good. He He's always out. I know sometimes I hear stories about royal grandmas always being hide, like hiding or whenever you're near the tank that they just disappear. Well, this guy likes food and he likes to pick on the clownfish. It's hilarious. Oh, see, there you go right there. He opens his mouth and he tries to show everybody who's boss. So I did not get a bashful royal grandma. He kind of breaks the mold. Now, if I run right up on the tank, he'll go dive up into that cave up in there and hide. But for the most part, I mean, he's my favorite fish now. This guy's beautiful and he's aggressive. And when it's time to eat, this guy eats. I mean, he can smash some food. So I'm very happy with him. Also, with my tank, I've had a lot of, lot of green algae, a lot of things like that. And I just got five big giant Mexican turbo snails from my local fish store, and they've really helped me a lot. I still have a lot of hair algae. And I don't know if you can really see this, but I've got flatworms like crazy. I don't know what to do right now other than using chemicals. I don't want to put a six line rasp through quarantine, put them in a 20 gallon tank and then have them start tearing up everybody. I mean, that's not really what I want. Um, if there's a better way to go about that, let me know. But for now, it's like, man, I just, I mean, they're not hurting anything right now. The flatworms, I, I never see my fish eating them. So I don't know if they're actually some sort of food source or could be, or if there's any type of critter that'll eat them other than a six line wrasse. But if you know anything, let me know, I'd appreciate it. Really the only major thing that happened on this tank is my J Bow wave maker bit the dust. And I believe it was the RW4. Yeah, it was the RW4. This guy right here, I got one of those ones that lasts six months. And I know you'll hear people say, well, I've had mine for 18 years and it's never failed me and I'm running a, you know, some sort of, you know, SPS tank on and it's perfect. Well, that's great. And I believe you, I'm not calling you a liar, but I got one of the ones that did not pass quality and it's garbage. So it lasted six months, blew out on me and I'm not going to get another one to replace it because it is a small tank. I just got one of these little guys rated for 420 gallons an hour. And I just turned it on, pointed it at the top of the rock. I'm letting it bounce around. And I also just added a Penguin 200 with a bio wheel. I'm gonna do a little experiment from now on. Um, now the best piece of equipment I have on this tank still is my Sumpless ATO. I love this thing. It does an awesome job. It never fails. It's worked perfectly ever since I've gotten it. And it's the video that I put up that I've had the most views on by far is the Sumpless Auto Top Off. And yes, it is still amazing. Not one hiccup, not an issue with, you know, continuing to run and dumping water all over the place. It's, it's wonderful. And I've been on vacation a few times. I don't worry about my salinity or water levels one bit. So yes, if you're on the fence, get it. I will do a video eventually of breaking it down and cleaning it just to see what it looks like. Cause I do have that biomedia block that's in the middle there. And then that bottom hole you can see with some of that air algae around it, it's a discharge area where water comes out. And sometimes the fish will take a ride on that jet. We'll see, yep, we'll see if he does it. Now nah, he powered through it. But sometimes they'll just take a ride and get blown to the front of the glass. So really I have an AquaClear 30, a Penguin 200, a cheap, I think it's a high door pump for about 420 gallons per hour. And that's what I got going for my flow. And everything kind of mixes together. There's the two returns. There's the, the pump at the bottom of the Sumpless ATO. And then I've got the high door just blowing across the top here and it's doing a nice mix. Uh, my anemone down here, he's still alive, thankfully. Doing okay, I, I wouldn't say he's getting huge, but he's still alive. I've got my two Rastas right here. I'm having a hard time focusing. Let's see if I can focus, there we go. So I got my Rastas down here, they're doing okay. But my main thing, I got a little cyano, which has gotten better since I've added the flow, since the wave maker uh, went out. And these darn flatworms, I just, I don't know what to do. 
I am gonna consider getting Vibrant. I know I've mentioned that a few times, but if I get some Vibrant in here, maybe it'll start to kill off the hair algae and uh, you know, not give all this nuisance algae a foothold like it seems like it's, it's had on this tank. My main goal is to get to December 21st because December 21st equals one year. And I wanted to give this tank at least one year. Early on, I was you know, toying with the idea of, you know, all right, maybe I'll just upgrade to a 60 or something like that. Eventually I will upgrade, but I've got it down here in my office in my part of the basement here. And this 24 inch footprint fits. I will probably get a 24 cube whether it's a 50 gallon or 60 gallon, it has yet to be seen. But because of my experience with the sumpless auto top off, I don't worry about a sump. What I use is like a quote unquote sump underneath my mess here. It's just a two gallon food grade bucket with the auto top off pump in it, that's it. And that serves a couple of purposes. Number one, when I go on vacation, I don't worry about 30 gallons of water being dumped on my floor in case there is a failure. And I haven't had one yet, but you know, you never know, machines break. But I don't have to worry about it. The most I'm gonna get is two gallons and it's gonna be dry and then I'm good. Yes, I do have to dump RO water in it more than somebody who has a big massive sump, but I'm in the basement, but I don't have a floor drain here and I just don't wanna come home to 50 gallons of water on the floor. Just not what I'm into right now. I want this to be fun and easy. And I'm excited to kind of see what I can do with just these two basic filters that you can get anywhere. So it's kind of a little experiment, but I want to see if just running the bio wheel, changing out the right size C cartridge once a month, I'm going to try to run it for a month and I have a little extra filter floss back in there. And on the AquaClear 30, I just have the sponge that comes with it, another little strip of filter floss and just the little bio media in a bag that I rinse off whenever I do a water change. So we'll see what this thing can turn into. I don't know if it'll ever be any good or not, but it's gonna be a fun experiment. And my goal is to have fun with this and not spend a fortune. I am pumped because my friend who kind of got me back into this hobby has a piece of green sinularia that he cut and he's got, you know, trying to attach it to a couple of rocks. Where that snail's at, I'm gonna park it right there. Sorry, I'm missing focus here. I'm gonna park it right there. And it'll be, you know, kind of by the flow, but not too much. And you know, if I put it up here at the top, it'd be a ton of flow, which I'm not gonna do. But down here, about you know a third of the way up, I'd like to see how big it can grow, and maybe it can you know fill up here and start to cover some of the equipment. But I'm excited about that. That's the next coral I'm gonna get. But my main concern right now is getting my green star polyps healthy. I did move them where they were at at the bottom right of the tank down here. They were just collecting too much gunk. I didn't have enough flow so I moved them up it's stronger light they're not thrilled and they've got the hair algae growing all around them it's irritating them so I'm just doing my best to take care of that and again being this that I want it to be low maintenance I'm keeping low maintenance corals that are cheap or given to me by a friend and I don't care if eventually if the GSP gets healthy if it just takes over the entire tank like I'm, I'm willing to deal with that because I like the look of it, honestly. I like the soft corals, I like the movement, the bright colors, and it looks really cool when only the blue lights are on. So I am excited to see what this will grow into. And you know, I've got a couple of months here till December 21st, and I think I'm just gonna keep it running. I'm just gonna see how far I can stretch just the basic filters and just the simple, easy to keep corals. I don't dose or supplement anything. And really the most delicate thing I have in this tank is this anemone and he seems to be doing okay. He has not moved for a couple of months. So I think that's his spot. And I am just using a Mars Aqua black box light. I've got it about 10, 11 inches off the top of the tank. And I still play around with it you know, occasionally. I'll move it just maybe a quarter of an inch, half an inch up or down, uh, change the intensity of the light because I want to get it dialed into where everything's happy. But I know, I know ultimately if you just quit messing around with it, the corals can adapt. I mean, the fish don't care. I mean, they're just doing great. They don't care what's going on. It's the corals that I'm, I'm messing with right now. So uh, excited to see where this goes uh, by December 21st. Again, that's the date. I will pull apart the Sumpless Auto Top off at that point, unless I'm forced to earlier, clean it all out and give a real in-depth review in December on that about the performance for you know almost a year since I've had that. But I guess the point is, is I'm just willing to let this be 
and not fiddle with it too much. And as far as chemicals go, I may add Vibrant just to try to clean up this hair algae and maybe like a flatworm exit product or something like that if there's no natural way to do it that doesn't involve a six line RAS. So as always, any suggestions, comments, complaints, uh, go ahead and send it my way. I do not mind. I, I don't think I know everything. I know I don't know everything. And I want this to be fun and as low maintenance as possible. So I appreciate anybody that watches this. And uh, take care. We'll talk soon.